Roman gladiators entertained audiences in the Roman Republic and Roman Empire in brutal and bloody fights with other gladiators, wild animals, and criminals. The fights took place in the Colosseum, which is a huge stadium that was first opened in 80 BC. It was as tall as a modern 12-story building and could hold 50,000 spectators. In this video, we will know the different types of gladiators in ancient Rome. Subscribe if you want more content like this. Gladiators were generally enslaved people or prisoners who had volunteered to become gladiators in exchange for the promise of fame and riches. They were trained to fight with different specialties, weapons, and fighting styles to make an interesting show for the audience. At first, fights were first held at memorials and funerals, but they were so popular that they were also held on other occasions, such as battle victories and birthday celebrations. Wealthy Romans paid for the games in an effort to gain popularity. Julius Caesar became popular by organizing large public games and theatrical shows. Gladiators were the main attractions of the arenas, but there would also be fights between animals such as bears, lions, elephants, and rhinos. Number 1. Murmillo The Murmillo or Mirmillo wore a helmet with a stylized fish on the crest, as well as an arm guard, loincloth and belt, a legging on his right leg, thick bandages covering the tops of his feet, they are heavily armed gladiators. The Mermillo carried a gladius and a tall oblong shield in the legionary style. However, the shields were heavy and thus made fighters very slow and tiring in long fights. Mermillones was typically paired with a Thracian opponent, but occasionally a similar hoplomach. The shields provided a great barrier between the Mermillo and his opponents to block attacks. Number 2. Hoplomachus Hoplomachus gladiators were well-built and heavily armed gladiators. They fought with a 27-inch long gladius. This sword was designed to push and parry rather than cut and slice. Hoplomachus also carried a spear called a hasta, which was six feet long. On top of that, they wore a galea visored helmet with a heavy crest. The right arm is protected by a laced leather manica, while the lower part of the left foot was protected by a metal greave. However, they fought with similarly armored gladiators. Due to their heavy armor, their combat speed was slow. The Hoplomachi were paired against the Mermillions or Thraces. They may have developed from the earlier Samnite type, after it became unpolitical to use the names of now allied peoples. Number 3. Samnita The Samnite was an early type of heavily armed fighter that disappeared in the early imperial period. The Samnites were a powerful league of Italic tribes from Campania, with whom the Romans fought three great wars between 326 and 291 BC. A Samnite gladiator was armed with a long rectangular shield, a feathered helmet, a short sword, and probably a greave on his left leg. It was often said that the Samnites were the lucky ones as they got great shields and good swords. Number 4. Noxi. Although they did not consider themselves gladiators, the Noxii were still arena fighters, comprised of criminals and other undesirables whom the emperor and his officials wanted rid of. The Noxii fought in deplorable conditions with little or no means of defense. The Noxii fought animals, other Noxii, trained gladiators in mock fights, etc. Number 5. Dimacaris. Dimacaris were Roman gladiators who fought using two swords. They usually fought against heavily armed gladiators such as Mermillions or Hoplomachi. They were used by two curved swords called Sika or Sikai, which had a blade of about 16 to 18 inches. Sometimes they also used the gladius as a weapon. They did not use a shield, although they did wear a light helmet with a visor that fitted well to the head. His legs and arms were protected with leather wrappings. Demacaris had the ability to wield a sword with both hands. Number 6. Secutor the Secutor or Chaser was developed to fight the Retiarius. As a variant of the Mermillo, he wore the same armor and weapons, including the tall rectangular shield and gladius. The Secutor's helm, however, covered his entire face except for two small eye holes in order to protect his face from the fine points of his opponent's trident. The helmet was also round and smooth, so that the Retiarius net could not grab it. Number 7. Trex this is one of the most popular types of gladiators. They were introduced as replacements for the Gallic gladiator type after Gaul made peace with Rome. They carried a small square or rectangular shield that was made of wood. The shield was small in size and offered little protection below the groin. 
This is why the Threx wore greaves and okri on both legs, reaching to mid-thigh as a form of leg guards. They also used a sika, which was meant to wound an opponent's unarmed back. They wore a protective belt over a loincloth and a helmet with a side feather. The Threx commonly fought against the Mermillo or Hoplomachus. Number 8. Bustuarius Bustuarius was a tomb fighter, from Bustum, tomb, a widespread reference to the association of gladiatorial combat with funeral games. Servius notes that it had once been the custom to put captives to death in the tombs of strong men, which afterwards seemed a little cruel, so it was decided that gladiators should fight in the tombs. For real gladiators, this was a humiliation, since they fought in the catacombs for coins with no opportunity for fame or glory. Even among gladiators, it was an unflattering term. Cicero used it to compare the morale of his enemy Clodius with that of the lowest class of gladiators. Number 9. Esidarius. The Esidarius was probably first brought to Rome from Britain by Julius Caesar. The Esidarii appear as arena fighters in many inscriptions after the 1st century BC, apparently pitted against opponents of their own kind. It is not known if the Esidarius rode into the arena in his chariot, then dismounted and fought on foot, or fought while he was in the chariot. Number 10. Retiarius. The Retiarius was developed in the early Augustan period. He carried a pitchfork and a net, gear in the style of a fisherman. The Retiarius wore a loincloth supported by a wide belt and a larger arm guard that extended to the shoulder and the left side of the chest. He fought without the protection of a helmet. A metal shoulder shield was occasionally added to protect the neck and lower face. A variation on normal combat was a Retiarius that engaged two secutors at the same time. The Retiarius stood on a bridge or raised platform with stairs and had a fist-sized pile of stones to hurl at his adversaries. While the Retiarius tried to hold them off, the secutors tried to scale the structure to attack it. The platform, called a ponce, may have been built on the water. The Retiarii used to fight against Secutores, but sometimes they fought against Myrmillions. Number 11. Scissor. The scissor used a special short sword with two blades that looked like a pair of open-ended scissors without a hinge. This type of gladiator fought with a weapon consisting of a hardened steel tube, enclosing the gladiator's entire forearm, with the end of the hand capped and a semicircular blade attached to it. Number 12. Bestiarii. Bestiarii or beast fighters were people who were closely associated with wild beasts and arena animals. The name was given to those who trained and cared for wild animals, gladiators who specialized in fighting wild animals, and also criminals and prisoners of war who were executed as criminals by being thrown into the wild beast. The gladiators' opponents were wild animals such as leopards, lions, and tigers. Weapons used by these gladiators include a spear, a knife, and occasionally a whip. Gladiators also wore a visored helmet called a galea, which was decorated with crests and basic leather leg and arm wrappings. Number 13, Andabatai. They were generally hapless criminals who provided comic relief to viewers. Andabatai gladiators are also among the most famous types of gladiators. These were vision-restricted gladiators who wore helmets without any openings for the eyes. They had to put on the blindfold, which excited the delight of the spectators. And Abate fought hapless criminals alone, with a sword as their only weapon. They also fought bare-chested, although they wore cut-resistant vests and a helmet without eye holes. Number 14. Equite. This type of gladiators entered the arena mounted on horses and began to fight on horseback. As a rule, if one fell off the horse, the opponent also had to fight on foot. From time to time they would dismount after some time, if neither combatant had won, to continue the fight on foot. They fought with a spear or a short light spear called a verutum, and a gladius or a long straight double-edged sword called a spatha. They used either a medium-sized round cavalry shield called a parma equistris, or a large oval-bodied shield called a clipius. The equus were always the first to fight during a scheduled day of gladiatorial games. Number 15. Sagittarius. They were skilled archers equipped with the short, powerful war bows of the barbarians living in present-day Russia and Ukraine. When they fought, the arena was littered with bushes, rocks, and trees to provide cover for the fighters, forcing them to stalk each other through the natural setting. Generally, they participated in mock battles reflecting Roman victories against Noxii gladiators. They did not use any shields but wore scaled armor and spiked helmets. Number 16. Provocateurs. 
Provocatores, which means challenger, are a type of gladiator who challenged other provocators in a fight. They fought with the gladius while using a rectangular semi-cylindrical body shield. Their helmet did not have a crest, which made them stand out from other types of gladiators. They also wore a small chest plate called a spongia, which was made from a single piece of metal that covered the chest. If you like to know stories from the past, I recommend that you go through the channel to learn more about the ancient world. Subscribe, and I hope to see you next week.